If you're interested in learning how to add 10 gigabit networking to your network environment for less than 250 bucks, then this is the video for you. Stay tuned. Welcome to Crosstalk Solutions. My name's Chris, and in this video, we're gonna be setting up some 10 gigabit networking for less than 250 bucks, and we're gonna be doing it with this uh, Microtik CRS305-1G-4S plus IN switch. Now that model number is quite a mouthful, but the switch is actually a really nice little switch, and it's very, very cheap for what it does. Okay, so before we get into that, though, let's take a look at the overall architecture of what we're gonna be setting up today. So basically, I'm going to be doing 10 gigabit networking between two servers. They are both Ubuntu 16.04 servers. However, this should technically work with any server or computer that you can get the 10 gigabit network card installed into. So wherever the card has drivers that will work, this should work just the same. So we have one server here and one server over here on the right, and then they are connected with fiber into the SFP plus ports of the Microtik switch. That Microtik switch is powered by 802.3 AF PoE, and that is a gigabit ethernet port that goes right into my Unify switch. Uh, I have everything set up on its own separate VLAN, which is VLAN 88, and I have both my computer here that I'm recording this footage on, as well as the Microtik switch set up as untagged ports in my main switch that uh, are all on VLAN 88. And I chose VLAN 88 just as a, an arbitrary number because the default network of the Microtik switches is 192.168.88.0 slash 24. So it doesn't have to be, and we'll go over all those details when we actually get into the configuration and setup of this device. But for now, let's talk about something very, very important. Maybe the most important thing that I'm gonna cover in this video, and that is the correct pronunciation of Microtik. So Microtik is a Latvian word, and if you were actually Latvian, you would probably pronounce it Mikrotik. Okay, so that is the correct, the official correct pronunciation of Mikrotik, but it actually depends on geographically where you're located in the world. So for instance, in the UK and in Canada, they don't say Mikrotik, they say Mikrotik. And then here in the United States, because of course we have trouble pronouncing words from other countries, we say Microtik, all right? So I'm gonna be saying Microtik in this video just because it's easiest for me. Uh, but I did do a quick Twitter poll, and you can see here that after 94 votes, 77% of people agree with me that the correct pronunciation is Microtik. Uh, however, the official pronunciation, technically it should be Microtik. Um, I might say all three of those and maybe even some other variations throughout this video. Okay, so let's take a look, let's take a closer look at the CRS305 1G 4S Plus IN. So this is a five port desktop switch with one gigabit ethernet port and four SFP plus 10 gigabit ports. One other thing that I really like about this switch is that in the back, it actually has redundant power. So you can plug in two separate DC power supplies uh, that range from 12 to 57 volts. And it will take two different ones. So you could plug these into two different circuits. And then if the power goes out or one of those, one or other of the circuits blows, technically you should be able to keep this device online. And it even has a nice little handy cable management uh, plastic piece to handle two power cords coming off the side. So it's a little tough to find this switch. Uh, however, I do see it available at Baltic Networks. Well, not available, but available for pre-order for $124.25, that's uh, USD, of course. And uh, it says it's available by the third week of May, and I'm recording this uh, on April 10th, okay? So this thing is back ordered pretty severely. I know when I got mine, I probably ordered it like November or December of 2018, and I received, I received it like sometime in January, I think. So probably about eight weeks if you're gonna order one today till you actually have it in hand. So let's talk about the cards that I got. So the cards that I chose for my servers, uh, and this was actually on the recommendation of Tom Lawrence with Lawrence Systems, so thank you, Tom, for this recommendation. I went with the Chelsea N320E. This is a dual port SFP Plus network card, and I got mine off of eBay because I found them really cheap. On eBay, they were $29.99 each. 
Yeah, here we go. So this is the exact one that I got, $29.99. Looks like they have only one left <laughs> if you wanted to get one. And they took, uh, they actually came relatively quick. They came in about a week. Now the problem with this card, and I didn't realize it until actually I had received the card, is that the bracket was a low profile bracket. So it did not fit in a full height PCI slot, even though it does say on the it does say it's a full bracket card on the listing, but the ones that I received were like a low profile bracket. So I actually had to remove the bracket entirely and then just sort of sit it loose in the PCI slot to get it to work with the server. So just keep your eye out on the form factor of the cards if you're gonna buy one. Now they do make sort of brand new, these are like an older generation Chelsea 10 gigabit uh, networking card. They do make newer cards uh, however, the newer ones are like $166 on Amazon, so way more expensive and totally blows the $250 budget for this project. But if you are going to be installing this into like a production server in a production environment, then I would probably go for the latest generation card just because it's gonna be supported a lot longer. And again, links to all of this stuff down in the description below. But now let's take a look at how I connected the card. Now I chose Fiber. And the reason that I chose Fiber was because I happened to have four SFP Plus modules sitting around that I had bought a long time ago. In fact, you can see here it says, I purchased this item on November 8th, 2017. And when I bought this item, I think I bought like a couple 10 packs and I had a bunch left over. I had like four of them left over, which was perfect for this project because you need one SFP Plus module in each of the servers and then two uh, to connect the fiber to the switch itself. I went with the 10 GTEC for Ubiquity, or I should say the ones that I used were the 10 GTEC for Ubiquity SFP Plus modules. They actually did work perfectly fine in the MicroTIC switch, but they also make a 10 GTEC for, for MicroTIC SFP Plus module as well. It's exactly the same price. Either one of them is gonna work perfectly fine. When you're using SFP Plus modules, you need to get fiber optic cable. And what we want are the LC to LC multi-mode fiber cables. Here you can see them on Amazon in a variety of different lengths and a variety of different colors. I have one one meter length, that's the one that doesn't stretch all the way over to here. And then I have one here that is a three meter length LC to LC multi-mode fiber cable. However, Using fiber is more expensive than the alternative, which is using a DAC cable or direct attach copper cable. Now what a DAC cable is, is essentially the SFP module plus the cable in one unit, right? So you see here, it has the ends on it. These ends that are on this cable right here, it's direct attach copper, meaning that you don't need to purchase a separate SFP module this is built in to the cable, right? So basically you just buy this one cable with these DAC ends on it and uh, it's much cheaper. So whereas the SFP module is $20.99 and you need two of them, so you're already up to $42 plus the $14 for the cable, that's $56 total for that setup, you can get one DAC cable for $18.99. That's actually a three meter DAC cable. You can go a little bit cheaper than that. I think $15.99 if you get a one meter DAC cable. And the DAC cables come all the way up to the seven meter length and the seven meter DAC cable is about 42 bucks. Okay, so let's take a look at the overall pricing here. Now this is what I paid for everything. Uh, I paid, I ended up paying with shipping $141.28 for the MicroTIC switch. I paid $68.98 for two of the Chelsea N320E 10 gigabit cards. And then I paid $83.96 for the 410 GTEC SFP Plus modules. And I bought uh, $28.58 worth of fiber patch cables for a total of $322.80 shipped to me, all done, everything included. Of course, that's not including the servers and stuff, but we're gonna assume that you already have those. now. The cheapest that you can actually get away with, if you went with the DAC cables instead of the fiber setup, is $141.28 for the Switch, $68.98 for the two Chelsea 10 gig cards, and then $31.98, and that's gonna be two of the one meter DAC cables. And the total price there for all of that equipment is $242.24. And if you go for the three meter DAC cables, uh, you're gonna be almost exactly right at 250 bucks. 
All right, we're gonna to get to the configuration of the MicroTik switch in just a moment. However, before we blow away the configuration completely, let's test this out using iPerf. So here on the left-hand side, I have my one server, which is 192.168.88.4. And we're gonna put that into iPerf 3-S server mode so that it's listening for connections from clients. And on the right-hand side here, I have 192.168.88.100, and we're gonna say iperf3-c 192.168.88.4 to run tests against the iperf server that is in listening mode. So let's go ahead and press enter. Boom, and there we go. So you can see here down this middle column that the bandwidth that we're getting for this speed test is 9.4 gigabits per second or about as close to 10 gigabit networking as you can hope to achieve so really really nice all right so let's go ahead and now blow the configuration out of the water we're going to factory default our microtik switch and uh, and then go from there so here i am in the microtik or microtik switch we're going to say system reset configuration reset configuration okay uh, now at this point i'm going to run a persistent ping to the uh, switch And we can see that it is actually already no longer responding to ping. So it is down completely. Now, by default, MicroTik equipment comes configured as 192.168.88.1 with username admin and no password. However, it doesn't have any sort of DNS servers. It doesn't have any sort of gateway set. Okay, so that means that once you factory reset it or when you receive it, you're not gonna be able to connect to it from other networks because it doesn't know how to go anywhere else other than 192.168.88.0 slash 24. So what you need to do is configure your own computer into that same network. There we go. So you configure your own computer into that same network. So in my case, I just went DHCP and my computer was configured as 192.168.88.102. Uh, the gateway of this network is 192.168.88.254. And I saw in the background here that the router OS has popped up and we are now able to log in with the default credentials, which should be admin and no password. There we go. Okay, now there's actually two different ways that you can connect to MicroTik equipment. One of the ways is by just connecting directly to the IP address of the equipment, in this case, 192.168.88.1, the default IP address. However, you could also use a program called Winbox. So I'm gonna run Winbox. This is free to download from MicroTik. And if you come over here to Winbox, you can just click connect right off the bat, as long as you're in the same network, because uh, it already has 182.168.88.1 as the default choice uh, with admin and no password. You could also click on neighbors and hit refresh and it should find any MicroTik devices on your network. So in our case, we're just gonna click connect and okay. And there we go. So we are now in the MicroTik route uh, switch. If we click quick set, we now have all of these options. If you're in the GUI, you can also just click Quick Set up here in the upper right-hand corner and you get those same options. However, we're gonna use Winbox here. So Quick Set, we're gonna leave the MAC address alone. We're gonna leave it in bridge mode. We're gonna leave it static. We'll leave it at 192.168.88.1. However, if you want to put this device into your own network, you wanna use your own LAN settings here. So the IP address, the net mask, and the gateway, as well as the DNS servers. So again, no gateway to begin with. Let's go ahead and add one, 192.168.88.254 in my case. And then we're going to say 192.168.88.254 for the first DNS server. And let's add a second backup DNS server of 1.1.1.1. Down for the router identity, you're going to want to give that router a name. I'm going to call it 10 giggity. And then for the password, you want to create your admin password. Make sure it's something strong and something that you're not going to forget. And hit apply, followed by OK. From here, we can go to tools and go to ping. We should be able to ping out to the internet, 4.2.2.2. Let's go ahead and start. And there we go. So we're getting replies from 4.2.2.2. The MicroTik switch can now see the internet. As far as setup of the MicroTik switch, putting it into your own network and just taking all of the rest of the defaults is good enough. There's a ton of stuff that you can actually do with this switch, but that's way beyond the scope of this particular video. So as far as configuration goes, we're completely done with the MicroTik switch. If you click on interfaces here, we can see 
We have Ethernet 1 and then SFP plus 1, 2, 3, and 4, of which 1 and 2, you can see that there's some traffic being passed. If I open up SFP plus 1 and click on the traffic tab, let's go ahead and expand this a little bit bigger. So here's SFP plus 1. Let's go ahead and run that same speed test again or the same iPerf test and let's watch the graph move here. Run. And boom, there we go. So immediately you can see that it jumped up to 9.8 gigabits per second on the transmit. All right, there we go, test is done. Let's try it the other direction as well. So I'm gonna say, control C, over here on the second computer, I'm gonna say iperf3-s, and then over here on the first computer, iperf3-c192.168.88.100, enter. And yep, once again, you can see 9.41 gigabits per second. Okay, so the only other thing that you're gonna have to do is get those cards installed into your server. Now with Ubuntu, it was super, super easy. Basically, I just put the cards in the server and Ubuntu 16.04 already had the drivers for it. So it came up right away. If you look at these Ubuntu servers and we say cat etc network slash interfaces, here you can see the one that I configured statically, right? So I just made this static. If you wanna check for the card, you can say LSPCI grep Chelsea, uh, probably capital C here. There we go. So we can see Ethernet controller Chelsea communications T320 10 gigabit dual port adapter. One final troubleshooting tip for finding network adapters in Ubuntu. You can always do cat slash proc slash net slash dev. And that's gonna show you the list of adapters available in your server. So in my case, we have the loopback or the local, er, uh, the local address. We have ENP1S0. This is the first SFP plus card. Then we have ENOP0S31F6. That is our ethernet adapter. And then we have rename three, which I don't know why it does this, but it actually did this in both of my servers. The second port of the two port Chelsea 10 gig network adapter was called rename three. So I'm sure you can rename that somehow if you want. Uh, in our case, we didn't. Uh, but then in the Etsy networking interfaces, the only one I actually set up, the only one of these that I actually set up was ENP1S0. And you could just sort of fiddle around with those to see which ones are passing traffic to figure out which one is which in your own server. Okay, so there you have it. Let me know what you guys think about this project down in the comments below. I'd be curious to hear your thoughts. Also, how you pronounce a micro tick yourself. I'd love to hear about that as well. Okay, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please click subscribe. My name's Chris with Crosstalk Solutions, and thank you so much for watching.